Hi and welcome to another episode of Inside Oizong. So we have been interviewing a few of my colleagues in the last few episodes, but today I have a very special guest with me. I have with me Jainam Mehta, who is the Chief Marketing Officer at Oizong. So let's begin this episode with Jainam. Hi Jainam, welcome to Inside Oizong. Hi Ann. And this has been a very good experience for me when I've been talking to my colleagues and finding a very different angle about them. So I'm expecting the same with you. So I think you're the right person to ask this question. Uh, tell us the journey of Oizom. Like, uh, how did it all start and wh where were you uh, with all this? So I would like to hear something. So this is like one of the most interesting stories. Prior to Oizom, I was working in a hardcore Bollywood and like a movie industry, like, you know, really into the movie space. And then there was this movie called The Revenant, which won the Oscars. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to, my, uh, to have an interaction with Leonardo DiCaprio, where he mentioned just one thing that, you know, do something that has an impact. The same evening, coincidentally, Sohil calls me up mentioning about Oizom. Okay. Sohil is, yeah. of course, my co-founder and the CTO. He calls me up and we discuss that, okay, this is a good idea. Moving on to Ankit and that's how Oizom started, you know, where the idea was to make environment understandable and predictable. Yeah. And that's where we started with the whole journey of making air quality yes. scalable and you know yes and we all know how we are right now i mean we have a good global presence and you have been playing a pivotal role in that but before i get on to your work and also tell me how did this pandemic affect you i mean what was your experience how did you manage to cope up with everything and where are you right now in your mental state see personally for me it was really tough considering that i would not be somebody who could just stay at home it was really yeah. difficult for me so of course, pandemic changed a lot of things, the way how we perceive things. But I think there's always a blessing in disguise. For instance, there were a lot of pending things that you know all of us had to do. Maybe a hobby or maybe something at work, which we were able to do because you were stuck indoors, you could give time to those things. So what do you think that uh, is one thing that once everything is normal, back to routine, we are all, you know, uh, exactly like zero. What is this one thing that you want to do, which you used to do previously and now you are restricted to do? Oh, that? I really want to go just once into the cinemas, get a tub of popcorn and yeah. like, you know, just watch a movie, <laughs> you know, just with that ambient sound, people shouting and that, that experience you can't get even, you know, with all the Netflix and Amazon Prime and everything. Absolutely. I think that is even one thing that even I am looking forward to. So hope that day comes soon. So now coming back to Oizom and uh, something that I wanted to ask you is that uh, this is all about air quality, right? And we all know how uh, uh, grieved the situation is around. So uh, what do you think about the global scenario and where uh, when we compare it to India? So what's it? Uh, how is it? How is the global scenario in terms of air quality? What's the problem that people are looking to solve? And uh, how are we contributing to that? See, air quality has been a problem and it's just increasing with the, you know, rapid urbanization and industrialization. But I think one major thing that we have started now, at least post pandemic, one positive thing that has happened is a lot of people have realized that, you know, even invisible, intangible things yeah. can be very harmful to your health. Yeah. So I think a lot of initiatives are being taken. For example, uh, uh, this year, so as per the plan of 2020 to 2040, mm -hmm. Europe is now going to be focusing on extensive, you know, clean resources, mm -hmm. green energies, setting up special low, low emission zones. Yeah. And I think we are adapting quite well. So as a, I mean, I'm honestly very impressed with the way India is taking, you know, air quality as a measure yeah. and, you know, all the laws that are coming up. I'm sure you must have read yeah. about the stubble burning laws, yeah. right, yes. for the farmers and everything. So I think this is a, this is, we are going in the right direction. Maybe the pace needs to be accelerated, but we are in the right direction. Right. So this is the question that I had, which is in connection to that. So where do you think India as a country is missing out uh, in terms of taking this problem? Are we not taking it that seriously? Do we do not have that kind of infrastructure or maybe the economy is not uh, helping us to get solutions to this. See, what I think? wouldn't blame the economy because see the biggest advantage and the biggest bottleneck of India as a country mm. is the size and the population. Right. So you would see something happening in France or something happening in UK you'd be surprised. UK is probably the size of what Gujarat and Maharashtra combined. Now look at the size of India. Yeah. Look at the population. Right. Like if you see overseas, right, people have number of people per square foot yeah. here you have square foot per people yeah. like it's the opposite <laughs> exactly yeah. so i think that's that's one reason but i'm 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 very much in favor that you know we are taking steps slowly and steady yeah. of course we might take time to achieve our sdg goals but yeah. we certainly will okay so um Oh, and my next question is to understand that uh, how has been the learning from you when as part of Oizom? Like, 
what are the things that you were not uh, aware about and now you are like okay this is something that I, I wouldn't have known if I was not in Oizam. So. so I'll tell you a very funny story yeah. here because this is more as more of an insight. So for example, you know when you are at a crossroad, you're yeah. standing right, and you you always see a lot. You know when a when a bus passes, you know yeah. that okay there's a lot of dust. Now I'm like oh shit, PM two point five. Yeah. So you see it instantly clicks <laughs> yes. when somebody's like dude, that's PM ten, that's PM two point five. So it's it constantly at the back of your head, yeah. and I think these small changes have had a huge impact, not just to me but also to the people around me so my friends and my family as well where you know even something as simple as turning off your ignition when you're at a crossroad yeah. these are the things that you realize once you work in the domain because you see how bad you know it is okay. so i think enough of uh, work and enough of uh, uh, talking about oism so tell us something about yourself how uh, what do you do in your off time like when you're not working or how do you recharge yourself what's what's the thing that so one thing that i usually do to recharge myself and luckily enough i have a profession that helps me do that is to travel yep. and considering my role at my role of work i usually get to travel quite a lot yeah. pre pandemic era of course yeah. but so i think traveling is one thing uh, apart from that i i write quite extensively so i do a lot of writing and publish on medium and other blogging platforms as well okay and in addition to that of course reading because you cannot read if you do, you cannot write if you don't read so right. i think it goes hand in hand right so uh, in connection to this uh, uh, would that also be your hobby is that something you are very passionate about uh, traveling or there is something else that you still feel that okay this gives me a kick apart from uh, working so i think my hobby or what gives me a kick i mean yeah. those are different things but what gives me really that adrenaline rush yeah. is meeting new people talking to new people i would probably be super unproductive if i don't interact with like 10 new people in a month okay okay so i think that's something that you know keeps me going that's great that's great um the next question is maybe it could be a little controversial because uh, controversial rather uh, i ask it to everyone so tell me your favorite person at oizop this is what i have been asking everyone and i have been wanting an answer from so i'll tell you so there is this of course i wouldn't want to you know just make it very <laughs> diplomatic but see all of us together are stronger than any one of us at once right yeah. so i think it's the entire team together yeah. that has made it but possible. that is getting to diplomacy you have this that's the reason i said i need an answer because this is the part where i have been you know trying to fuzzle around a little so i think i'd give equal credit of my my journey in the past 5 years to sohil and ankit both of them okay. because see one of course was the reason you know why he's like you can do it you know he, i remember there was a time i mean extending a bit but i remember when we first moved and started our french office yeah I was a bit, you know, I was a bit skeptical. Like, would I be able to do it? And I remember Ankit and Sohil asked me to sit down in the office. Like, we know you can do it. And Nathos, like, you know, how yeah. would you? How is it not possible? Like, yeah. you have it in you. You can do it. Yeah. And I'm so glad I took that decision. You know, yeah. and and we all know the uh, the reach that we have had overall in the global. Uh, so imagine scenario. that one discussion, that 30 minute meeting yeah. to a phase now, right now, where I handle and talk with like our partners from more than 50 exactly. countries. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that was the youth. So I will probably give all the credit to Sohil and Ankit. Equal, equal of course. Yeah. I mean, of course, the team goes. Yeah. So, being a part so, of so, it as yeah, well. exactly. So this is where you know when you are talking with the team. This is also I wanted to uh, show our viewers that. Uh, what do you think about the culture that we have at Oizom? Um, you can maybe highlight something what you were just. So saying. something which someone told me, okay, which is like I feel that you guys are probably like just a bunch of young friends who just come come and you start working and it's really impactful to see how you know we have evolved. So I have seen the entire team evolve over this period of time. So I think that is one thing that I love about Oizom okay. is there is no hierarchy, but you know all of us are learning something from one person or the other, irrespective of what position yep. you are in. Yep. So uh my last question to you is any message that you would want to give to our maybe the young audience maybe someone who's uh, it, it, as a citizen of a city or maybe a country anything that you want to you know pass a message So maybe two things one on the of course considering my role and wearing the hat of a chief marketing officer for an air quality company is that please be a bit more cautious when you use the environment the thought process that you know how is one person going to make a difference there is actually a different there is a marginal difference even for a single person and for the rest of the audience and anyone who is watching this is that just if you have like even the slightest belief like even 1% that you can pull something off give it a shot you never know how and when it's going to work so i think those are the two that's things that's great that's great thank you janam so much for your time uh, this was really fun and uh, i am looking forward to you know interact more and find out more about in the coming years so thank you so much thank you so much yeah so guys uh, this was uh, janam mehta the chief marketing officer at oizom i hope you liked this episode check out for our other episodes from inside oizom we are also starting a new series with extended oizom talking with different uh, partners that have 
uh, associated with us so hopefully we'll be coming out with more such videos and thank you for your time for watching this stay safe stay happy